Hi everyone. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the causes of fatigue. Fatigue is becoming a very common symptom that many people complain of. And being a symptom, to me, that means we can define it as a message that something is going wrong with the body. And we need to delve a bit deeper to find out what that problem might be. Fatigue isn't something we should feel on a regular basis. And most people are able to differentiate between being tired because of a few late nights and the very deep-seated, unrelenting fatigue that is completely unrelated to what you have been doing day to day. This type of fatigue is the one where you wake up tired and you might feel like you haven't slept at all. You may need a coffee, or three or four, to get going of a morning, and something sweet for morning tea when you start to flag again. After lunch you can barely keep your eyes open, and at the end of the day all you want to do is sit down and put your feet up. Preparing something healthy for dinner is usually the last thing you want to do. More and more people are complaining of fatigue and here I'm going to explore a few of the more common reasons so that you might be able to see if any of them have a place in your own life. It's not normal to be tired all the time. It's not just a sign of your busy life or the fact that you're getting older. There is something fundamentally wrong going on and if you want to be rid of that heavy, exhausted feeling all the time, see if any of these issues sound like you. The first underlying cause that can lead to fatigue is poor adrenal function. Our adrenal glands are responsible for energy production, they help to regulate blood sugar levels and hormone production. When we live busy, stressful lives, we can push our adrenal glands to the limit and we can exhaust them. They can get us through for years and years and then we crash and find it very hard to get going again. In poor adrenal function, you may also notice symptoms such as low blood pressure or dizziness when you stand up quickly, anxiety, dark circles under your eyes, insomnia, brain fog and increased allergies. To really determine where your adrenal function is at, and if they are the culprit in your fatigue, I like to look at saliva hormone testing, and there is a link below if you would like to know more about that. Before deciding on any type of treatment program, natural or otherwise, you need a really good diagnosis. But in general, to support the adrenal glands, there are a few things you can do. One is to eat good quality, healthful, whole foods. Using sugary sweets, biscuits, cakes or chocolate to boost your flagging energy causes an imbalance in your blood sugar levels and that puts a lot of pressure on your adrenal glands. Eating regular meals, ensuring good quality protein and not using sugar for a boost can help a lot. Easing back on the coffee is a good thing as well as it can just whip the adrenal glands and lead to greater fatigue. But I don't usually recommend you stop coffee cold turkey. You need to support your system with good food, herbs and supplements from your naturopath before easing out the coffee. Herbs such as Siberian ginseng, rhodiola and withania can all support adrenal function as can the superfood maca powder. Green smoothies are also a wonderful help and many of my patients say they had an increase in energy from adding those into their daily diet. If you are suffering from low blood pressure, a pinch of Celtic sea salt in your water a couple of times a day can assist. But if you do suspect you are suffering from adrenal fatigue, get your saliva hormone tests done first. The next one we'll look at is the thyroid gland and problems here often go hand in hand with adrenal dysfunction. The thyroid also has a hand in energy production and it regulates metabolism and temperature as well as being a neurotransmitter in the brain. Alongside the debilitating fatigue symptoms of an underactive thyroid are weight gain that is difficult to lose, feeling the cold, depression, hair loss and dry skin. A common reason for poor thyroid function is iodine deficiency. In Australia our soil is quite deficient and we're not big seaweed eaters so this can be one cause to investigate. Stress negatively affects the thyroid too as do toxins from mercury from amalgam fillings, pesticides, other hormone imbalances, autoimmune issues and emotional problems so there's a lot of areas to check into there. One excellent way to test thyroid function is to check your basal temperature 
take your temperature first thing of the morning for a week and notice if, if it is low. So normal is 36.7 degrees and under 36.3 can be an indication of low thyroid function. Although blood tests for thyroid problems can be a bit unreliable, it is best to get a full panel of tests done if you suspect your fatigue may be coming from an underactive thyroid. Make sure your doctor tests for thyroid antibodies, a thing called reverse T3, and does an iodine excretion test to see if you are iodine deficient. Again, if it seems your thyroid is causing a problem, then professional guidance from your doctor and naturopath is required. But in general, you can support the thyroid by eating good quality whole foods, green smoothies, and staying away from sugary, fatty junk foods and stimulants such as coffee. Also eliminating soy milk and soy foods from the diet, as they can inhibit the thyroid, as can foods from the brassica family, that is broccoli, cauliflower, brussels sprouts, cabbage and kale. So keep those to a minimum. A gluten and dairy free diet can help too. Introducing seaweed such as dulse, nori and wakame can ensure you're getting sufficient iodine in your diet. Selenium is a mineral that's also deficient in our soil and that can assist thyroid function. It can be found in Brazil nuts. On an emotional level, the thyroid gland can be related to self-expression and creative life force. Is there something in your life blocking your ability to express yourself in life? That can be a great question to ask yourself whether you are suffering from fatigue issues or not. Self-exploration is always a worthwhile pursuit. So I could talk for hours on my pet subjects of fatigue disorders, but I'll have to leave it here for this week. Next week I'll be back with several more causes of fatigue that you may identify with. If you would like more in-depth information on these subjects, I urge you to take a look at the membership club that I have on offer. That is my platform for exploring these issues in much more detail. I interview experts on these important topics and write informative articles. There's a wealth of information contained in each monthly module that I invite you to discover. This week I have a special $1 one month trial so that you can do just that. The first module takes you through a journey on the fascinating subject of food. And one of the great bonuses is an interview I did with a gentleman who cured himself of a thyroid disorder and fatigue condition, as well as several other illnesses, through the power of living foods. It is a fantastic interview and I hope that you do take advantage of the offer and take a look. I'll see you next week where I'll be talking about several more causes of fatigue.